Hello guys, Dan here, and today guys I'm going to be showing you how to choose parts for a PC, or in my case, kind of a gaming PC. A lot of you guys kind of get a rough idea of kind of, you know, what components are actually put in a system. But today I'm going to be showing you how to actually, you know, choose all the right parts and kind of give you a guide on how to kind of, you know, put a system together. Because to be honest, all of you guys can get confused, you know, when it comes to actually getting parts. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is just open a few tabs. So we're going to go for processor, we're going to go for RAM, power supply, motherboard, graphics card, case, and storage. These are the core components that you need for a PC to work. So we're just going to load all these tabs up. This is how I kind of prefer to do it. Now, first of all, you want to be choosing a CPU. Now basically a CPU is the the meat of a PC, it's kind of the brain and this is the thing that makes a computer work because you do need a CPU indeed and for a gaming one, if you want it to be any good you need to get a good CPU like an i5 or an i7 something like that. Now it's totally up to you if you want to go with Intel or AMD, totally up to you but Intel do make faster CPUs so, so if you're wanting a faster system, you you, you kind of gotta go for Intel. If you want a system, um, you know that's kind of lower budget, and and, and you want kind of you know a better processor in terms of price performance for the lower kind of budgets, AMD is probably the way to go. Now I will say, um, what I'm gonna do today, guys, is just base this around a one thousand pound gaming PC. So I'm gonna choose parts that are gonna roughly be around a thousand pounds. So first of all we're going to choose a CPU and I think it seems sensible to go for an Intel CPU. So we're going to go for the, the socket 1150 which is a Haswell architecture and we're going to go with an i7. So we're going to go with an i7 4770K. There we are. So this is 230 pounds. Now a lot of you guys are going to be asking, Dan, how do I know this is going to be compatible with all the other parts? Basically when you've can I chose a CPU, the only, the only really thing you need to look at is what socket it is. So for this CPU is socket LGA1150. You don't need to know what clock speed it is, you don't need to know if it's Haswell or Ivy Bridge or anything like that. You just need to know the socket. So this is socket LGA1150. So when we move on to choosing a motherboard, all you need to do is get an, an LGA1150 motherboard. It's that simple. So on to the motherboards. So we need an Intel socket since we've got an Intel CPU. And now we need to get a socket 1150 uh, motherboard. So because Area PC is a technology website and it's not like Amazon where it sells an absolute ton of electronics, it is set out in um, categories and subcategories, which is incredibly easy for you guys to choose your parts. So as you can see, look, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections for socket 1150. Now generally guys, the ones that have a Z on them mean they're kind of overclocking based motherboards and the ones with the B and H, they're not exactly overclocking based motherboards. However, we are going to be going with um, the cheaper of the Z chipsets, so we're going to go with Intel Z87. If you're choosing something like an i3 or an i5 or you don't want to overclock, feel free to get one of the cheaper kind of chipsets like B85, HB7, not HB7, <laughs> um, H87. Or something like that. In terms of the socket uh, 2011, which are generally the larger i7s and Xeon stuff, uh, that's on uh, Intel X79. So just want to point that out. Same with the 1150. As again, you, you be in the hitch, which are non overclocking chipsets, and then you get your Z77. So for this one, we're going to be going with the the Z87. So we're going to click on there, and then we're just going to choose another board. There's not that many of them, to be honest. We're just going to go with kind of a cheap one, so I think it's uh, it, it kind of makes sense to go with a motherboard around £100. We're going to choose this one here, this Gigabyte one. I personally have a Gigabyte motherboard and do really like it. So here we are, £104. So it's socket 1150, which supports the CPU. It's Intel Z87 chipset, which allows us to do some overclocking and stuff like that. As you can see, it's a full-sized ATX motherboard. And just on the pictures, actually, the pictures do help. So, so as you can see, you've got enough expansion, so expansion slots. You've got a lot of PCI Express times one slots for stuff like network cards and stuff like that. You've got four RAM slots, which is nice. And you can see here, look, you've got your SATA ports. All information is here on the top. And then if you scroll down, you're going to get a big list of everything that's included. The main thing to look for is uh, just to see um, 
if you generally have enough uh, SATA ports and USBs. So as you can see, look, six USB 3s, two USB 2s. As you can see, it's got um, two USB 3 headers, two USB 2 headers. And then you can see the speeds of RAM that it supports, which again is at the top. So from um, 1066 to 2666. Now, a good thing to do is just to type in the motherboard into Google and go to Gigabyte's website to get the official kind of specifications to see what, which RAM it supports. Because uh, I have known area to do a little bit of contradicting. As you can see here, look, it says all, all the way from 1066 to 2666 megahertz. So if you scroll down, as you can see down here, it does then change. It says from 1333 to 1600. And you don't want to be getting RAM, RAM that's too fast for the motherboard. So you're going to go to their official website, click on specifications. And then you want to see what RAM it supports. So it does indeed go all the way from 1333 all the way to 3000 megahertz. As you can see, they've got OC on, on the end of all of these, apart from these. If it says this, you'll still be fine. Um, it just. Uh, so it supports overclocking and stuff like that, and that uh, it it supports the XMP uh, memory modules. Now, as you can see, nice memory board. We're going to stick with this one since it's got six uh, SATA six gigabit ports, and uh, it actually has three PCI Express times sixteen ports, which is nice. And yeah, it does support AMD Crossfire and NVIDIA SLI, so you can put two graphic cards in this build in the future if you want to. Now, moving on to the RAM. We're going to go with DDR3 memory, because that's all lots kind of around these days. And then you want to choose a speed. So as you can see, as again on this website, it's all nice so they're down. 13, 33 MHz, 1600 MHz, and on and on and on. So you want to choose which kind of speed you want to go with. Now for gaming, there's no real point going over 1600 MHz. You'll see no performance increases at all. But for stuff like editing, you might do. Uh, one thing for editing, editing is that you might want a larger capacity. But that is, uh, you know, totally up to you guys. So for this video, we're going to be going with 1,600 megahertz. Seems sensible enough. And, yeah, we're going to be choosing 8 gig. Whoops, click the wrong one there. We're just going to go with uh, one of the cheaper sets. So we're going to go with this one here. Two 4 gig sticks. So it's 8 gig of Crucial Ballistic Sport memory. 1,600 megahertz, cast latency of 9, which is nice for gaming. Which means... Uh, the CL or CAS latency is uh, the time it kind of takes for the RAM to, you know, get its ass moving and start actually doing, shall I say. So CAS diamonds on this are 9, 9, 9, 24. 1.5 volts and that's all good. So the only real thing you want to check with the RAM is that the speed spot around the motherboard and, and also the capacity is. And just going over back to the motherboard, as you can see, it says max of 32 gigs. So yeah, you can get 8 gigs. Uh, fine indeed. And that's going to be about it for the RAM. Now moving on, we're going to be choosing a graphic card. And I think since this build is based around a £1,000 um, build, I think it's sensible enough to go over 780 Ti, which is a, a high-end GPU around £360. So uh, just because of preference, I'm going to be grabbing the MSI one. I personally have an MSI GTX 770, which is a, an awesome card. And, and the cooler on it is just so good it's so quiet and actually does an amazing job it really does so, so i'm going to recommend the msi ones as you can see you've got loads of heat pipes that go right from the chip all the way to the um heat sink the fans do a wonderful job it's amazing good at overclocking as well i give you that now whatever graphic card you get in as soon as it's pci express which basically none of all graphic cards are these days l l literally all of them unless they're ancient old um yeah you no, they're going to work. Graphic cards work in, in any PCs near enough. As soon as they've been built in, like, say, the past five years, all the motherboards you're going to buy these days support them. And the socket you put the graphic card in is going to be this slot here. And since this motherboard does support SLI, if you were to get another graphic card, you'd put it in this port here. Preferably wire the, uh, the SLI kind of things there. But yeah, you put it in there and did there. That's all good. Now, one thing you kind of might want to check with getting a graphic card is that it has enough uh, video RAM. So this card has 3 gigs of video RAM, which is more than enough for gaming these days. The sweet spot is 2 gigs, but the higher end cards, like the 780 that I've chosen today, has 3 gigs, which is better for kind of multi-monitor uh, high resolution gaming and stuff like that. So the core clock on this is just under 1 gigahertz, and the frequency on the RAM is 6000 megahertz. 
there we are. The RAM on GPUs is incredibly fast when compared to system memory. As you can see, there are system memory here, 1,600 megahertz, and then yeah, compared to the graphic card memory, 6,000. It's a uh, quite a big kind of increase in their core clock there. Now, one thing that is different with GPUs is that yeah, the memory is a lot faster. It's GDDR5, and the the memory on the chip. Uh, well, on the actual card is incredibly fast, and, and that's what delivers you some amazing gaming performance. Now, moving on, guys, to the power supply. So, since we're going with a 780i and an i7, I think it's sensible to go with, with about a 600 to 700 watt kind of power supply. Now, we're going to be grabbing um, a modular one, so 650 watt or less, and we're going to go for. Let's just go for, just looking on here. We might as well just go for this one here. So it's a Corsair CS650M. The CS is the series in terms of Corsair. 650 here refers to the uh, amount of power it can pull from the walls, 650 watts. And then the M stands for modular, which means not all the cables are attached, which is good for creating nice, clean cable management within a case, which is nice. So it's 80 plus gold certified, which is nice. Uh, flat back and low profile modular cables, which is always good. It really does mecha bills better, shall I say. Now, the thing with power supplies is that you're probably wanting to check the cables. So, as again, just um, you know, highlight your text. I think that'll do. Right click, search for Google. Generally, click on the top result and go, on to, and go to their official website. Costa's website is sluggish, I guess. That's weird. Um, and yeah, you want to just scroll down to see what cables it includes. So it's not on there. You want to go to tech specs. There we are. So it just tells you it tells you the connectors. So six SATA connectors, four PCI Express connectors, um, four of the four pin connectors, floppy connector, EPS connector, ATX connector. The EPS connector is the one that powers your CPU. The ATX connector is the one that powers the motherboard. These four pins are generally for older hard drives and LEDs. PCI Express connectors are for graphic cards, and um, SATA connectors are for SSDs, hard drives, optical disk drives, and stuff like that. There we are. And yeah, you can kind of find more information on here, like you know the efficiency, how much warranty you get, um, just to see if uh, you have a fanless mode, to see what temperature it's kind of told to run at. Uh, if it's modular, everything like that, that's all good. So we're going to be grabbing this power supply. And uh, yeah, very nice power supply for the money actually. Now moving on to the case. Um, to be honest, is should I say that 90% of people will go for a MIDI tower, which is standard. All, all these cases are exactly the same size, despite what the photos might look like. So MIDI tower is the uh, general kind of size for a case. The micro ATX is a smaller form factor of cases like the um, very popular Bit Phoenix Prodigy. As you can see you have limited limited kind of space to build in but they come in a very small form factor which is nice for some people. And then if you want to go really small you can go for a mini ATX which as the name implies it's mini and is a lot smaller actually than the uh, the um, Micro ATX, I'll give you that. So there you are. And then you've also got the uh, home theater PC, which area don't really sell many of them. Yeah, they sell one. These are Raspberry Pi, Pi covers. Yeah. And then, as well as this, you can get to the full towers, which are enormous cases, quite frankly. And there we are. Yeah, incredibly large cases, which are made for water cooling. So we're going to be grabbing a MIDI. Tower case, and yeah, we're gonna be going with I don't know, we'll go with a mid range kind of case. So let's sort it from uh, lowest to highest in terms of price and flick over to I don't know, page three. Let's say, yeah, we're gonna grab a case off here. I think we're gonna go with the Corsa Graphite uh, 230T, nice case, 62 pounds, nice internals, motherboard cut out, and everything. You can fit. Uh, a lot of hard drives in, you, you can fit SSDs in, fans, everything that you want to. Of course, I make some nice cases. They really do. You got USB 3 on the front, you got your headphone and microphone, and then power and reset buttons. That's all good. And yeah, there's no real need to look into the specs of cases unless you want to mount 
uh, loads of hard drives, tons of hard drives of these, um, uh, you know, tons of graphic cards, I want to install like water cooling and stuff like that. So for the purpose of this video, we're not going to look into the specs of the case because there's no real need. Now moving on guys, finally for the storage. Now for most systems these days, we're going to be choosing an SSD and a hard drive, so there we are. And then, yeah. Typically, I just prefer to choose an SSD first. So I think it's sensible to go with a 240 gig SSD for this build, since we're kind of keeping it around a thousand pounds. And we'll see if I've kind of kept that budget at the end of the video. And yeah, I'm then gonna, then gonna kind of show you how to um, adapt that budget depending if you've gone over or under. So we're gonna be getting a 240 gig SSD, and I think it's sensible enough to get a, a Mushkin Kronos. These are very fast drives, and for the money, they're they're quite nice to be honest. And do beat out the Samsung, uh, uh, the Samsung 840 drives, yes. Fair enough, they are fast, but these, well, when well, these drives are on sale, it's kind of stupid not to get them. Not a lot of people have heard of Mushkin, but I tell you, they make some good stuff. I, I've had this SSD myself for two and a half years. It's still rocking, it's still fast, and, uh, yeah, it's nice. It's very nice indeed. So, yeah, 96 pounds, very nice. Now, for the hard drive, I think I think we should grab like a three or four terabyte drive. Seems seems kind of sensible in terms of hard drives and SSDs. As soon as the SATA, which all SSDs are to my understanding, and in terms of hard drives, yeah, you can kind of choose on this website. You got 3.5 inch IDE, 2.5 inch SATA, and 3.5 inch SATA. 3.5 inch SATA are the drives that go into desktop computers, like the one we're building today. The 2.5 inch drives are the ones that go into laptops. And yeah, you don't want a laptop drive because they're slower, they can't spin as fast, so they're not really good. And generally not higher of capacity. Now, so we're going to be going with, let's just uh, toggle this from um, lowest to highest price. I'm just going to grab the first 4 terabyte one that pops up on here. So here we are, the 4 terabyte Seagate Barracuda. So here we are, I've got all the parts. We've got an Intel Core i7 CPU, we've got a gigabyte motherboard, 8 gig of RAM, a GTX 780. Corsair power supply, a Corsair case, a Mushkin SSD, and a Seagate uh, hard drive. Yes. Now, what I like to do is I like to open good old Calc, not calculator, the Open Office Calc, and then just type in. So I just put here CPU, motherboard, so Mobu. I've got RAM, GPU. Then we've got a case. I haven't got a case, I'm lying to you. That's a PSU. Yeah, PSU. Then we've got the case. Then we've got an SSD, then a hard drive. And I like to just type the prices in on here. Then it makes it easier to kind of alter uh, your pricing if you make changes. So £228. Motherboard is £104. The RAM is £64. Graphic card is three hundred and forty pounds. Quite expensive, like graphic card, but it's going to get you some some nice performance indeed. The power supply is sixty five pounds. The case is sixty two. The SSD is ninety six pounds, and then the hard drive is one hundred and four pounds. With it being one hundred and five pounds, with it being kind of a four terabyte. Now, just a tip: if you've never done like kind of no kind of work in Office Calc or Microsoft Excel um, and you don't know no kind of programming or no kind of coding in this program. If you just highlight all of your numbers and, and have one left blank at the bottom, if you click this button here, which is the sum, if you click that, add it all up for you. Wow, there we are. So this one has come to £1,064. One thing you can do, if you right click, click Format Cells and click on Currency and then click OK. I'll actually put the pound sign in there for you. So as you can see, 1,064. So there we are. Uh, we have gone over the budget by 64 pounds, but you can recommend amendments, like instead of getting a four terabyte drive, get a two terabyte. I'll probably tune down uh, the case and get kind of a cheaper case and kind of, I don't know, a cheaper graphic card. I mean, this graphic card is a lot of money, but it's on sale from 375 to 340. So. It's up to you guys, but yeah, £1,064. And I hope this video, guys, has kind of educated you on how to choose parts for a gaming PC. Um, yeah, gaming PCs are exactly the same as normal PCs, apart from they have this part here. A graphic card. If you get rid of the graphic card, goodbye, it is now a PC.
cannot play games. However, I will say an i7 all on its own can play games, but you're going to be playing them all on like low and stuff like that. So, yes. The integrated graphics on an i7 are not bad at all, to be honest. I don't know what they're called, but uh, yeah, not bad, but you do need a graphic card. <laughs> if you just wanted to play stuff like Minecraft, no, you don't need a graphic card at all, but. But there you are, that's how you build the giving PC. Any questions, guys, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, and that's going to be about it. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.